All right, we're back. Uh, did the song just end like that? Um, we were uh, about to get to our guests uh, who did an investigation last night at McPike Mansion, which is a very old mansion out in Alton, Illinois. Very notorious. Goes back to uh, 1869. Very notorious in the world of uh, paranormal investigation in that region. So why don't we go ahead and bring these guys on. Um, Dustin Gable and Jason May from Clinton County Paranormal Research Group. Are you guys here? Yes, we are. Yep. All right, how's it going, guys? Not bad. How you guys doing? All right, thanks for coming on last minute. I appreciate it. Um, you guys are out in Clinton County. Uh, for those that don't know, that's, what do you call, Southern Illinois, yeah? Yep, Southern Illinois. And uh, you guys... Uh, you guys uh, just did an investigation at a pretty notorious uh, location last night, huh? Yes, we did. And how'd it go? Awesome. Very active last night, mainly because of the full moon and how close it was. We had a lot more activity than usual. Um, I don't know if people can hear the caller. I think it needs to be turned up. Um, so you guys had a, you guys had a ton of activity, yeah? Yes, yeah. yes we um, did. And you sent me over a bunch of EVPs. And uh, for our listening audience that doesn't know what that is, you want to give them a quick explanation? The um, EVP, Electronic Voice Phenomenon, is when you get spirit speaking to you that you don't physically hear, but it shows up on a recording device like a digital recorder, a set tape, or sometimes even video will pick up the audio of something talking that's not physically there. Sure. Um, do you... Uh have a, any opinion as to whether these are typically uh, intelligent or some kind of uh, replay of some kind, or do you have an opinion on that? Well, sometimes uh, some locations will have what's called residual, which is one event that constantly keeps playing over and over like a tape, and then you also have the intelligent EVPs that interact with you, answer questions, like in the Pike Mansion, there's a lot of intelligent responses to your questions that we ask, and they're totally aware of what's going on around them. Hey, if just can I, we stop one second? If one of you guys has a radio on, can you turn that down, please? Um, All right. Or whatever speakers. It's not a radio. All right. uh, so, yeah, so you're saying down. you've got a. Uh, You've got both of them. Uh, you've got stuff that interacts with you, and you've got things that could just be a, a residual, kind of left by some kind of extreme emotion or something. Um, yes. So uh, a, l a little bit of background on you guys. How long have you had the uh, the Clinton County Paranormal Research Group? Uh, we've been around since 98, but we we'll, didn't really go public until two years ago when we did the first big investigation, which was at Pike, on Halloween in 2013. And since then, cases have been picking up. We've been getting contacted and getting a lot more busy with going to hit locations and uh, collecting evidence. So it's really picking up cool. once we get okay. the name out. So uh, are, are you doing a lot of personal cases, people that are uh, having trouble with some kind of uh, activity in their home or something? We've uh, we've done four since last year uh, private residences that have things going on that shouldn't be. Sure. So yes, we do those too. Um, it's no doubt interesting work. Um, let's uh, let's get to the investigation last night. Um, the history of this place is, I guess, <clears throat> for people around there, this is one of your classic uh, uh, haunted places that just has tons of ghost stories. Um, so, uh, you guys have a pretty impressive uh, amount of EVPs here. Do you want to uh, kind of introduce anything, or uh, what, 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 what's, some of your, what's some of your favorite ones that we can, we can play here? I'd, uh, I'd say the favorite one was the uh, one from the very first investigation we did, where we had a 100% skeptic that came with us, which was Moose from 975, a uh, local radio station, and uh, he flat out told me before the investigation that he is a skeptic and he does not believe in this at all. So during the seance that we did, the uh, first one that was contacted was him. And he heard a woman speaking to him. And he actually did stop the seance and comment on it soon after that 
on the uh, video clips that we have, you see an orb come out of the wall at the same exact time an EVP was caught on both video and digital recorders. And uh, pretty much what it said was a female voice giggled and said, yes, it's me. So this is the It's Me EVP. I'm going to play this for our listeners real quick. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, we bring the laptop yeah, up there. Here to here. Yeah, let me play that again. I think we might have missed it. Oh, there it was right there. So it's right after the guy says, is somebody whispering? It's me. You hear a faint voice. Let me play it one more time. Yeah. And so that wasn't any part of your team, obviously. You guys ruled all that stuff out. No, because as soon as he said that uh, he heard a woman speaking to him, the whole room went totally silent, and we just kind of sat and listened a little bit. And to to catch that visual thing also on the infrared camera coming out of the wall at the same exact time that was being said, that kind of had validity to it. So we had the guy ask the question, is, is somebody whispering? And at the same time that we get the answer, you had a video of an orb coming out of the wall. At the exact same time. Okay, um, that one's pretty cool, and and so you told me earlier that that actually connected to another EVP, um, suggesting possible like memory or intelligence. Yes, it does. the uh, The second visit, he wanted to go back and sit in the exact same spot and just kind of rethink what happened to him, because as of that event, he flat out told me that he is no longer a skeptic since he experienced that, and he wanted to sit down and go back over what happened. And think about it, and he was talking about his experience with the owner of the McPike Mansion, and soon after that, we got the same exact female voice that verified by saying, yes, you did. And it answered him when uh, he was talking about that. So that you know, so that alone shows intelligence that they can remember so you're things re- that happened. You're referencing, in, in this clip, he's referencing the previous time. And let's see, uh, let's play this for our listeners. Ah, that is creepy. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play that again one time. So he's talking about the last time you were there, yeah? And yep. she says, yes, you did, like remembering what he had been doing. Whenever I heard it. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Yes, you did. That one's that, clear, too. And that shows that, you know, there's going to be intelligence to it. Because that was, you know, a few months after the initial event happened to him. And, you know, for a spirit to remember that far back and, you know, have some kind of conscience where they can actually remember those yeah, events, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of neat. That That is pretty cool. I mean... Um, who knows what exactly it means, but it is uh, uh, pretty thrilling to get that kind of a sort of connection there, yeah. Um, and see, at the time that that was caught, none of us, after he said that, none of us heard anything said. But when I got back home and pulled the audio off the recorders and I cut the noise level out, dropped it down, and started playing it, that was caught. But none of us physically heard that being said at the time. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, so you do uh, you clean these all up and do production work on them yourself? Then um, yes. Uh, what? Uh, just out of curiosity, if uh, anybody's interested in doing this on on their own, um, what do you recommend to uh, help capture the EVP? How do you reduce the noise? How do you uh, do what? How do you reduce the noise on these clips to try to hear the <clears throat> EVP better? We, uh, we use a program called Audacity, which is totally free to download and use. Once you load the audio file into Audacity, the first thing you do is normalize it, which that cuts out a lot of the, the base level noise, and that allows you to pull the EVPs out so you can listen to them a lot easier. And then, you know, the clip and the pace, that's a little bit tricky to get figured out. Sure. But once you get it figured out, you know what to do. But it uh, it helps clean it up and try to remove some of that baseline noise, so it's easier to pull the actual voices out. 
Okay. Um, there's a note for our uh, aspiring uh, paranormal researchers or investigators out there. Um, so uh, what other what other of these EPs are any of these EVPs? Are they from last night? I haven't uh, gotten all the audio done from last night yet. Okay. We got back about 2 o'clock in the morning from last night's investigation. So the, all these ones that we're hearing are from uh, previous investigations, but they're from... Previous, they're, they're, they're the all same from, location. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Same location. If you're just joining us, it's Dustin Gable and Jason May from Clinton County Paranormal Research talking about their investigation of McPike Mansion in Alton, Illinois. Uh, so what else from McPike? Uh, what do you recommend from the EVPs here? Um, any of them you want to play. I mean, uh, yeah, well, let's we've got see. some of the best, best evidence that we've gotten. So We've got uh, one here called I Hear Music. Okay, Let's and I'll, I'll tell you about that, because we had a local radio station that did a Halloween show, and we broadcast it live from the pike, and while the music was playing between the sets when they had us on the live radio talking about what we do, answering questions, on the uh, audio recorders, we have the spirit of a boy that's on the location, and I have the EDP of him that says, I hear music. And that was caught, pulled off, cleaned up. And if he wants to play that, it's, uh, it's kind of neat. Let's check that Is out. That, gonna, we'll, we'll play it a couple times. Um, here, turn this up for the listeners. Yeah. Right at the end there. Um, And that's I Hear Music, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's... With headphones on, with audio clip cleaned up, I was able to pull that out really clean, and there's no mistake in what it says. Okay, so well, let's try another one. Uh, how about "Where's My Mommy"? That sounds creepy. <clears throat> that uh, was that was actually caught in two different locations at the exact same time, because behind the property there's two vaults where uh, two kids used to be buried at behind the house. That was caught. At that grave site, and also inside the house at the exact same time on two different recorders. Oh, wow. And it is it is a female child uh, that's uh, saying, Where, where's my mommy? Let's try this. Hang on. And that was caught two different times. All right, so that one's pretty deep in the background. I don't, do you know uh, exactly where the where the uh, EVP is in that one? <clears throat> that, uh, that specific one. Let's see. Is, I think I hear it right there. Where's my mommy? Um, and you say that, so you got that on two separate recordings. Do we have uh, both of those or just one? Yeah, it looks like I just sent the one file, the one, but yeah. you see the exact same thing. That was caught in two places at the same time, which, you know, that kind of prompted me to look up that one spirit can actually be in two locations at the same time. And there's a lot of case studies done that do show that they can be in two different spots at the same time. Yeah, so I mean, it would make know, sense if it's not, it's not a normal audio, it's not a normal sound wave going through the air. There's something else going on here. You know, it could pass through walls or whatever. Um Mm-hmm. And just occupy a certain amount of space, I guess, huh? Um, so let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we've got, we've got a "You Need Help." That sounds interesting. This is uh, from November thirtieth of two thousand thirteen. Uh, so one when you when you get into the wine cellar, <clears throat> they have the uh, plastic lawn chairs that everybody sits in. We had them all stacked up in the corner, and on that visit, I had my daughter with me, and uh, we were all in the wine cellar, unstacking all the chairs, setting them up so we could sit down, and something spoke directly to my daughter, which called her name, and then said, you need help, like she wanted to know if my kid needed help setting stuff up, All right, let's. Uh, that, uh, that was kind of odd. Let's play this one, hang on. Is that the the voice right at the end there? 
It's right at the end. Yeah. And if you, if you really stop and, you know, think about the way that, that female voice sounds, it doesn't even sound like anything, you know, that we would normally hear. It's got and like an odd ambience to it. So there's a woman talking through the almost through the whole thing. Is that whole thing the EVP? It's the whole thing. There's whispering all through it. Some of that is us. Okay. But the you need help is the main EVP. And when you pull that into uh, Audacity, the wavelength shows that that's you know really thin. So it's it's not like. So it's a different voice, yeah. Um, yeah, I, it's no voice that was physically heard at the time. So let's see, right there at the end, you need help. And it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't even sound like somebody normally talking like they would. Right, yeah. <clears throat> like, you know, if I said, you need help, it sounded kind of broken. <clears throat> like, you need, and the help sounded like it was kind of cut off. Yeah, like. So- you know, I mean, like the radio station signal was kind of fading in and out. Yeah, it's hard to uh, it's hard to almost uh, you know to discern uh, some of them just playing them you know on the MP3 like this. But um, yeah. But yet, yeah, uh, I I mean I definitely hear a strange voice at the end of there that is either it almost sounds like it's in reverse or something or um. Yeah, it, it had an odd like tone to it. Did. You know, the normal human voice of someone speaking it's alive wouldn't be anything like that. It right. Just, it had an odd, I don't know, it's tough to describe. You just have to listen to it. And, so let's say uh, you know, think uh, about it. we've also got, what's this one, name called It's the House. <clears throat> that was, uh, we were actually sitting down after the chairs all got set up. And, you know, just kind of sitting around in the wine cellar talking about, you know, just the activity in the house alone and, you know, just kind of trying to figure out why so much activity happens. And the, the female comes in, my name is called, and then you hear a low whisper that says, it's the house. So and that is that same female that also said, the giggle and it's me, and then responded to the other guy talking about what happened to him by saying yes you did that is the same exact female voice okay so let's hear this one this is we're, we're gonna hear Dustin it's the house right that's what is on here oh yeah I heard it's the house for sure hang on if you uh, if you go into audacity and clean it up a little just did normalize one time to pull one level of noise out it'd be really loud and you'd really be able to pull it out. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's definitely I, there. That, that one is pretty creepy. It's those like close whispering ones that, that really get me. Those like, uh, you know, sounds like somebody just leans over it and whispers. That constant whisper constantly goes on down there when you're recording. That's actually pretty cool. So that's that's Jay piping up finally, or Jason, sorry, <laughs> Jason uh, I saying con- I just let him talk. He just takes over. So. <laughs> constant whispering at I the. I uh, wasn't on that one, so. Oh, okay, that's why. Um, but you're yeah, saying you yeah. you hear a lot of a lot of weird kind of shit like that at uh, McPike's. Oh yeah, yeah. Last um, time we did some recording, that's constant. It was, it was nonstop, and yeah, I can't wait to break some of them down with them. Some of them go, you know, spirits, whatever. They, uh, they were pretty active. If there was a question, dance, you know, called out, they pretty well acknowledged it pretty well. Which is actually one of the better ones I've heard down there yet. So. Yeah, you can definitely hear it. And uh, if anybody's at home, we'll try to get all these uh, posted up on our pa- on our page somewhere for you. Um, but uh, it's the house. That's definitely a creepy whisper. You guys, by the way, can call in if you have any questions for our guests. Seven zero eight two four four eight one four two. Speak to them directly. A new feature at the Sunday evening overdose. Um, did we do? Uh, we didn't do. Can you play nice? Did we? I don't think so. No, I, we didn't do that one. So yet. you know what? Let me uh, let me just play this one and see if we can uh, pick it out without your help. Hang on. Yep. <laughs> Oh, you will. Oh, is that that deep voice, huh? Here, 
Max, turn this up a little, could you? So there's there's a really deep kind of disembodied voice right at the beginning of the clip. Uh, I assume that's the uh, the EVP you're talking about. <coughs> that uh, <coughs> that the child is uh, towards the end of it. Actually, oh really? There was a uh, there was two EVPs. Oh, somebody just on s- that somebody with a audio clip. Oh, so there's two. Okay. Let's see. So let's play the whole thing. Okay, so tell us what we're looking at there. Dustin, you there? Yep. Yeah, we got we're on the Can You Play Nice MP three. So <clears throat> what are we hearing right at the beginning? There's a very deep and disembodied voice. Is that the Can You Play Nice? <clears throat> that uh that is believed to be Henry McPike, who is used to live in the house. And uh we Actually, listened to him talk to us pretty much all that last night, and we got a, we spot checked a lot of the audio from last night's investigation, and he was on it a lot. And we also got that boy a few different times last night, and we spot checked and played some of that back last night for the owner. One really loud one that we caught was that same little boy, and exactly what he said to me last night was, "Will you play with me?" And that was played for the owner, for the shaman that was also with us. And they all listened to it in real time. And that was just caught last night. So it's still extremely active and everything is still there. Very cool. You're going to have to uh, send us some of that stuff when you get it cleaned up. Um, Oh, definitely. And let's see what else we got. Uh, Let's play a couple more of these and then we'll move on. How about In a Tree? That was uh, that was news once again from uh, 97.5. That was the same day that he came with us to sit down and you know rethink what happened to him when he got that response of yes you did. It was uh, later on that afternoon he had to go back to the station and he was talking about uh, well we can't be handed around here you know all day we got to get going pretty soon. The minute that he said the word hanging, that same boy's voice came in and said in a tree. Now, for the time period, that's common in, you know, the mid to late 1800s for people to be home like that. Sure. But for, the, for that boy to have an EVP said of in a tree, tying in to him just saying painting, that again shows intelligence. They do know what we do and talk about there. And a lot of paranormal investigators talk about that kind of like, you know, trigger words or whatever, you know, um, that might trigger some kind of response from the... From beyond here. Let's, let's play you, this one. You got I, the same thing with, uh, like, trigger objects. Like, if you have, you know, like a set of marbles that's original and period to, like, say, 1850, 1860, that can, you know, that can get some activity going, too, because it's something that that spirit's going to be familiar with, and they'll know what to do with it, and that'll kind of get them moving and talking a little. So, you know, yeah, there's keywords and things that can be said. It's like a switch to kind of flip it on and get them moving. All right, let's, uh, let's check this one out. Hang on. Yes, we just, we just hang in. We're not be here. But... Wow, that was very clear. And, I mean, it's that that's one of those ones that's so clear that it's hard to believe that yeah, there was no one, there that, no one loud. there that said it, you know. It's like, um, I mean, obviously, I, I'm not accusing you of uh, of that, but it's just, you know what I mean? It's like, it's hard to it's hard to believe that's just... You know, uh, some anomaly when it's that clear. It's it's strange. Hang on, let me play that one more time. Just hang in. I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> yeah, just hanging in a tree. Just that's, in. that's just crazy. Wow. You know, you know the the way Mick Pike Mansion is set up. When you're actually in the wine cellar, you're like, you know, fifteen to eighteen feet underground. And with those doors closed, no outside noise gets in at all. It is that quiet down there. It's just silent. All the outside noise is blocked. So you're not going to have all that, you know, distortion and outside contamination coming in. It's really quiet down there. But when you catch an EVP inside the wine cellar, it's going to be loud because the ambience is just perfect. The acoustics in that cellar is just, it's the best conditions that you can get EVPs in because everything is so quiet. Um, 
It sounds. I mean, yeah, it sounds. It, that's some of the some of the. You know, it sounds uh, just as good as anything high profile or high budget I've heard. You know, um, what uh, what about? Let's let's do one last one. Um, let's see. How about? How about hi or hey, Dustin? So I assume. Uh, That's uh, we were just getting ready to walk out of the cellar <clears throat> to uh, leave for the day, and I had uh, I had left something sitting on the table inside the wine cellar and I had just thought about it and I had to go back in and get it as soon as I walked into the cellar I'm by myself and it's that same female voice that said hey Dustin like right when I walked in like they were going to remind me that I forgot something <laughs> okay it just, it, that, and I physically heard that one being said to me right at that time alright let's check this so out sometimes you do physically catch what's being said once in a while, you can hear that with your own ears. All right, we're playing it. Yeah, right there, towards the end. Hey, Dustin. Yeah. And, you know, that, that again shows intelligence that, you know, they know what we do. They're totally aware of us being in-house, what we do, what we talk about, and they interact with us. And it's, you know, the more you go, the more activity happens because they eventually get, you know, so used to you being there that, you know, they easily talk. That's our theory. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've always, I've always had a, I think like a lot of people, I've always had an easier time uh, reconciling logically with the residual, you know, uh, events and things like that, that you can maybe attribute to something we don't understand about uh, the imprint we live, leave behind on a electromagnetic field or something. But the intelligent spirits is something that I kind of, uh, you know, don't really look into all that much and, and kind of, you know, it's it, some part of me sort of wrote it off at some point. Um, what can you tell me about why maybe I should give that a chance again? Um, do you guys have a lot of experience with intelligent spirits, as you might call them? That's what they call them, and uh, and like I said, this was actually discussed last night after the uh, event and investigation was done. That you know we were kind of discussing the whole you know residual versus intelligent haunting, and you know why do the intelligent haunts exist? Because you know just because somebody has died, they don't want to leave a certain place that they like it there so much. They choose to stay, and that's the exact case with the Pike Mansion. They don't want to leave. They obviously like being there, and they interact with all the people that come to do this and collect the evidence and listen to the EDPs and try to catch things on pictures. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know there's a huge, and you know, there's a lot of people that believe into in it, and there's a huge industry that that runs on it too. Um. What do uh what what other kinds of things uh we we've heard all the EVPs have you guys gotten any uh, decent photographs from uh, from McPike Mansion? <clears throat> we've uh, we have gotten quite a few photos, and the uh, one of them was actually posted on the radio show Facebook page a while ago. Okay, of a blue like mist type thing. <clears throat> that photo was actually caught by somebody else when I found out just an hour ago. About four or five years ago, I believe, someone else that I've never met, never talked to, had captured that exact same thing in the same spot. I didn't know about that until a while ago. So, you know, for like six years apart, for two different people to catch that exact same thing, <clears throat> that's more credibility to, you know, that not being smoke, breath, fog which we did try to actually debunk that photo. Yeah, it's a very creepy photo. You And, and who took this photo that you posted here? Was this you? That was uh, Roxanne, also from 97.5. Okay, yeah, sorry. And the, uh, the event that happened when that was taken, she was talking to me at the side of the kitchen towards, like, the back of the house, getting ready to go in. You know, it's first investigation she's ever actually been on. So she was a little bit spooked. And she said that she felt ice cold past through her all the way and she said it stopped directly behind her so what I had told her to do is 
turn around and take about four or five pictures. She ended up taking four pictures on her iPhone, and the only one that had anything unusual in it was just that one. And it was, you know, one picture after the other. But only that only showed up in one. Yeah, yeah no, and this, uh, this is know. definitely a, a pretty cool-looking picture. Uh, for people that are playing along, if you want to go to the Sunday Evening Overdose Facebook page, uh, Dustin has posted this picture to the page, and it looks like, um, I don't know, yeah, like a smoky specter, you know? Um, and uh, it kind of has that effect if something ran around at a million miles an hour uh, or something, but it, I don't know, it's sort of just like floating smoky, you know, kind of uh, stretching. Comes out the window, right? Yeah, we zoomed down that. There's a, actually, there's a couple of spots. Right the of the are you talking, we, we're having trouble hearing you. Are you talking directly in the phone? Sorry. Kind of sounds yeah, like I'm you're talking in a, in a bad connection and everything. Yeah, you if you, now? yeah, just kind of, kind of yell at us, and we'll, we'll, we'll make do. Oh, uh, okay. I was just saying that uh, that picture we zoomed in. You know, it, there's a few spots in it as you get deeper into it. It looks like you know an outline of a woman coming out looking at you. Oh, that that's pretty. Oh cool. wow, I see exactly what you mean. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And this was just wild, this was just uh, a random uh, photo snap, right? Just turned around and and took it. Yeah, he just he turned around and took a few, and it only showed up in one picture. Yeah, I definitely see yeah. this uh, almost like ghoulish sort of long-haired outline at, towards the bottom. Yeah, yeah. for sure, and like yeah, a, like an arm lot, coming yeah. down. Um, although you know, who knows? You see that stuff in the clouds too, but it is cool. Um, but uh, I think uh, I think one of the most odd things that you know I've never really given much thought was EVPs of animals. Go I never on. really gave that a lot of thought. I don't think anyone really like, has. <laughs> well, I, you know, it doesn't seem normal to, you know, really catch an animal on EVP. But that was actually brought up and mentioned also with the Halloween investigation. And what kind of things yeah. are we talking about? Dogs barking or? Uh, Dog and cat. Okay. Because the, the shaman that was with us at the Halloween investigation you know, she is a full blood Indian shaman, and she's you know really into that, and uh, she definitely knows her uh, shit. <laughs> but um, she had brought up, and you know, being Native American, they do believe a lot in you know animal spirits. That's you know the whole thing is the whole you know animal spirits, chakras, totems. They you know have a knowledge of that, so she had mentioned. You know, once in a while we do get a occasional EVP of a dog and a cat. And it was kind of odd because on the audio, you know, nobody heard this at the time. But when I got back home and listened to that exact clip, I have a Shih Tzu type dog barking. And directly after that, a cat meows. Now, this is in the wine cellar, which outside noise is totally blocked. Okay, nothing gets in. And that was on the recorders. I ended up playing that clip of the dog and the cat for the owner. She was upset over that for a few months, but she would never tell me why. It turns out that both that dog and that cat are two animals that she used to own that did die on the property. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, just a few months ago, she wanted me to get some pictures together taken to uh, make some videos, you know, highlighting the EVPs with, you know, showing the location that was actually caught in. And one of the pictures, I have the apparition of a Shih Tzu dog in the wine cellar sitting underneath the chair that the owner always sits in at the seances. You know what? Uh, we've got... I, didn't, I didn't catch it right away, but I'm just like, that's crazy. We've got somebody calling in uh, that wants to talk to you. Uh, yep. Hey, who's this? Me. Uh, did you want to talk to our guests from uh, Clinton County Paranormal Research? Sure. Uh, why do Why do you guys record all that yeah. stuff and then like go sit at home and like? You know what? Oh, uh, we got it, isn't there someone you can like hook away, up like? Uh, like uh, oh, wait, hang on. We got something weird happening. We've got somebody calling What's in. Happening? Uh, <laughs> the show is the show is like replaying itself on delay. Sorry. Oh yeah, that happened a few like uh. Yeah. All right. All right. What was your What was your question? <laughs> the question was. 
instead of going and taking hours of, uh, of recordings and going and looking through it all, isn't there any way you can like, hook up some headphones and like get a live feed of it? You know what I mean? Maybe then you could talk to them or stuff. So, I don't know. You're talking about a way to do, do the processing live time so you can try to hear them better uh, yeah, it's, it's and interact. Frequency rate, yeah, right? and um, that's a good that, question. That isn't that is entirely possible because oh, the recorders yeah. that we use they actually have what they call a live listen function, so we can be recording and have headphones plugged in listening at the same time. That way, if you do catch an EDP, you physically hear it exactly as it is said, and then you can answer and talk to them right at that moment instead of, you know, waiting to get home. That's basically what I was asking. What, do you do that? Or? Some some digital recorders can do that, and others cannot. So, like, when he but was like, we, yo, Justin, you could have turned around and been like, what? You know? <laughs> yeah. See, at, at the time, I didn't have a recorder that could do that, but now we do have recorders that you can actually talk to them right as the EVP comes in and you catch it. Oh, so I can, had a really good idea, but I guess not. I guess somebody saw that first. Yeah, well, yeah, don't rush to the patent, patent office, I guess. Um. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, what's, I mean, I'm just thinking that's how it should be done so you can, like... And, you know, that is the way we do it now once we, you know, found out which recorders actually have that function. Um, what, I, I, uh, I, my belief is, I don't know, every time I hear these EVPs, they, they just sound kind of not like what the person who took them big things say. You know, I, I'm conflicted on um, some of them, but, I, you know, the certain ones of them sound really clear and, and pretty creepy. Um, yeah, the, but, yeah, like the whispering ones and like, yeah, the, yeah. But the, like the really fast ones where it's like, it's like he just said that the grandmother's at, at the dock. Like, no, he didn't say that. That's not what that said at all. And, like, that happens on TV shows, like, when you're watching the ghost shows. Yeah, like, right. What the, yep. what the fuck? It doesn't sound like that at all. And, like, the guy's no, like, and, uh, I think we heard like, some... Like on, uh, actually, the ones you played are probably the best ones I've ever heard. Yeah, these, <laughs> the, I, I didn't think they were very bad at all. I, a couple of no, them were, were very clear, yeah. Um, and, yeah, like, on, uh, on the program Audacity, on the upper right, once you get the file loaded to normalize it, clean it up, and listen to it, and check for EDPs, you can actually slow that down to, you know, if it's like a fast EVP, it's like, hey, so hi. Because we get a lot of those, it's, you know, just one syllable, hey, hi, hello. But there's a little slide at the top right corner that you can actually slow the audio down and listen to it a little bit slower to really pull out what's being said. Yeah. And that, that does help because some EVPs are, like, really fast. You know, one second, two seconds, it's done. But then other ones are long, full sentences, you know, statements. Yeah. I'm looking at this place online. It looks pretty creepy. They just let people go in there and you had to break in. No, we, we're actually allowed. They have open doors <laughs> that you can sign up for, go in, and, you know, investigate the place on your own. It's, so, you know, well, if, you go to, uh, <laughs> if you go to mcpikemansion.com, they've got all the info listed, the history, They've got the event calendar listed, so you know you know when when uh, events are all going on. It's uh it's a good time, and you know it's it's neat. Cause you pick some wild stuff up. All right, well, thanks for calling in. Yeah, that's all about all, all I wanted to talk about like the uh, ghost animals more. That's cool. All, all right, right. all right, boogie bye. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, some innovations there from our callers. Uh, I'm sure, you never thought of that before. Um. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you were get you were getting on to uh, uh, the the ghost uh, animal EVPs. Anything else on that? <clears throat> well, we uh, we got the dog and the cat, <clears throat> and then that one photo that showed up. That turns out that that was actually the apparition of a Shih Tzu dog. It was captured in the wine cellar underneath the chair, and I'll I'll get that posted. As soon as I can locate that person. <laughs> yeah, keep us uh, updated, okay. and we'll uh, you know we'll keep uh, posting your stuff on our pages and everything. Um, Definitely. And uh, any uh, any other major highlights from the uh, McPike Mansion investigation, or anything exciting last night? Uh, last night is just you know the spot checks we did on the audio. <laughs> that phone always does that. <clears throat> oh, you know what? I think but we might have we might have lost Jason. Yeah, his uh, his phone just died. Oh, yeah, like uh, last night 
you know, we didn't get to call the audio yet. I still have a lot to pull off of the actual recorders. But last night, doing the investigation, we would, you know, if I would hear things that really stood out, I would stop the recorder, spot check, and play it right at that time. And we did catch a lot of EVPs of the male with the deep voice talking and the one boy who was actually caught a couple times last night talking to us, asking us if we wanted to play, please, and... and <laughs> yeah, we'll, have to, keep, we'll, we'll have to keep up with that stuff. I mean, because this is, uh, like like our caller said, I mean, these are some of the better EVPs I've ever heard. It's, uh, um, you know, something that uh, something that's pretty cool uh, to hear some affirmation of, regardless if it's uh, residual or intelligent. It's, uh, it's pretty cool shit. Um, before you go... Uh, do you have any insight into, uh, I know you mentioned, uh, I forget his name, the original, uh, McPike, but, uh, do you have any, uh, insight through your investigation into who might be hanging around or why? Well, you've got, uh, there's actually quite a few that do hang around. You've got, Henry, you've got the two kids, which we do not have names, so either one of those kids, and you've got two females. And I think one of the slaves and then the guy that designed the house, Paul Washinger, once in a while he is at the location, but not always. There was like 11 different spirits in the house constantly. And it's, I mean, it's a very active location. And these are, these I mean, are like, uh, ap- apparitions that have been seen or mostly EVPs or, or what's... It's, most of it's audio, but we've had some, you know, pretty odd things show up in pictures and a lot on video. You know, they they do show themselves from time to time in some pretty odd ways. It's just not normal. Yeah, very, very interesting shit from uh, Clinton County Paranormal Research. Uh, Dustin Gable, we're going to have to move on, but uh, do, you got, do you have any uh, exciting investigations coming up? Uh, well, right now we're going through the audio from last night's, and, you know, we, we caught a lot. We've got a lot of hours of audio yet to go through. You know, that can take up to a week, two weeks. Oh, easy I bet, yeah. Because we look at every little thing on <clears> audio. <throat> I don't like to miss anything. And depending depending on how much you drink, too, I mean, it could take months. I, for me, it might be a lot longer. Um, but uh, thanks for coming on the show last minute again. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll no uh, we'll keep in touch with you. And I we had another paranormal team on, and I'm going to offer to you, too, anytime I... Uh, Anytime you guys are cool with it, we'd love to uh, broadcast an investigation live. Come down and visit. Um, so if you ever uh, if you ever have anything that would be that would be cool for us to uh, tag along, let us know. Oh, definitely. Anytime. All right, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. See you later. Okay, there goes Dustin Gable and Jason May's phone died. I guess before that, the Clinton County Paranormal Research group i guess or maybe they're just called clinton county paranormal research uh they got a facebook page they got uh the youtube they got some other shit going on i will post all their links on the sunday evening overdose facebook page um we're gonna play a little bit of music and come back with some more news and bullshit and probably some asshole callers who are gonna start bugging me all right (laughs) 